Welcome to Ideas Live. I'm Anne-Marie Oman, and this is my co-host, Karen Anderson. And this is the show where we pursue a particular topic or subject that we are interested in and want to learn more about. And this year, we've given over all of our shows to how to help. Mm -hmm. We've had some really fascinating people. But it's interesting that we, both of us are writers, and we hadn't yet interviewed a writer on literary activism. So we're trying to figure out and think about how do writers become active? How do we use our art mm -hmm. to make a difference, to help in some way? And, um, and it is a problem for me because I think artists in general, there's this perception that we're sort of either in our little studios right. or our workshops or at our computers or whatever it is and we're working very hard but it's sort of art for art's sake yeah and or the other end of it it's art for fame's sake yes, you know, it's, yes. And it's all about um, best-selling and success and more ego centered and so somewhere in between there is a way to create good art and support other causes at the same time. That's and that's been my my sort of question is you know how do you do that? What causes? Um, how does it how does it work? And there are many many ways mm -hmm. I think that you can enter into literary activism. And but I was I became curious about okay who does it? How is it done? What are the appropriate times to do it? How does it make and affect our art. And, and how does it make a difference in the larger world? Yeah. Right? Yeah. So. Exactly. And here we have and here we children's have books. That's children's especially books. especially interesting. I know. I love children's books. So we are going today to pursue this subject of literary activism and uh, what it means to help through your art with um, a gentleman, Bill O. Smith, and he's about to come on. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Ideas Live, the show where we have a deep conversation about a subject of interest or passion or wonder. So today, uh, I'm Anne-Marie Oman. Most days I am, too. And this <laughs> Karen is Anderson. Karen Anderson. And our guest today is Bill O. Smith, who is um, a children's author and has done the Chickadee series, plus a couple of other beautiful books, and um, Bill has an interesting history, and we're going to talk about literary activism in the How to Help series, and his history lends itself to this because you have been in service your entire life. Can you talk about that a little bit? Well, I've been an educator. Well, I started as camp director, and then I was a <laughs> teacher and principal of uh, Eastern Elementary here in Traverse City in Sutton's Bay up north, where part of my... Uh, Things, but I've always been also all along a storyteller. Mm -hmm. I just like to tell stories, and I even wrote some plays for the kids in school. And so that's how the writing developed after I uh, retired. It from sounds teaching. like you were a hands on principal in a way that some principals are not. You know, if you're writing well, plays for the children, that that says right out of the gate that you're mm -hmm. you're in there getting them to interact with yeah. you. I like the fun part of principaling. <laughs> <laughs> I always I, said I love this job nine out of ten days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And when you were teaching, what grades were you teaching? Uh, anywhere from fourth to seventh. Mm -hmm. So you had that whole mm -hmm. middle school range. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. and this is uh, for our viewers. This is one of the books. This is, is the, the first, the first, first. one, Chickadees okay. at Night. And I have to confess, I heard the text for this before the book was even shaped at the Beach Bard's Bonfire, where you were reciting it just mm -hmm. to test the material. And I think as a writer, that's a really interesting thing that you were you were testing material before you even shaped the book. So can you talk a little bit about that? Like where did this idea come from? This whole thing about chickadees and you know, you're never quite sure, but I think it came from I was uh, caregiving for my mother-in-law at the time and 
um, she had let go of a lot of things. She, I always say it's not about beautiful memories, it's about beautiful moments with people with dementia. And she and loved her name was Faith. Faith, that's Faith. right. And she loved to watch birds fly in and out. And I could see one time, I'm not sure if she said it or just looked at a bird came in, it was the evening, and I watched her watch that bird fly off. And it, it's like, where did they go? And um, and I just the, the thought popped into my head, with chickadee caps on chickadee heads, do they sleep eight across on chickadee beds? <laughs> and that made her laugh, and I loved to make her laugh, and I kept going. And it, so that's how it, the first one kind of rolled out. So Faith started it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah what a special person. When, did she see the outcome? So, she did. She did. And um, she teared up oh. and she laughed at exactly the same spots every Wonderful. time. It was always a new experience for her listening to it. But um, yeah, she was the inspiration. But, you know, that brings me to something that. I was thinking about as I was preparing to discuss this is for children and maybe for some adults, reading the same story over and over is, is what it's about. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was asking my daughter for what were her favorite books as a child because we were talking about these books and how kids love the same book over and over again. As adults, we don't especially want to see the same thing over and over again, but what is that about? Um, is it the comfort, the, the yeah. security, the... It's the sound, too. It's learning language mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that mastery of the language. But it's also, uh, they love the pictures, mm -hmm. the, yeah. the story, and, and that kind of thing. So it's, it is the security. And, uh, you know, often someone you love has their arm around you. and sure. uh, And so... It's all wrapped up into that love. Which is wonderful. That, yeah. that, yeah, that we, whole... we don't buy these books and do one reading. They're, I mean, they're, mm -hmm. they're immortal, you know? Mm -hmm. They go on and That's on. That's the hope. Yeah. That's how you, know, you, know, you sell them to mm -hmm. grandparents and yes. parents. But yes. you know, after that first reading, it all depends on what that child <laughs> That's asks right. for. That's right. right. That's how you know, right. you know, whether or not your book is. But I, I appreciate what you're saying about it's the comfort of the sound. I mean, our first en encounters and experimentations with language are always about sound. I mean, and that's why the rhymes are so much fun mm -hmm. and the rhythms. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And it's very easy then for a child to even a little tiny learning to speak child is making the rhyme because it knows one sound and the other sound is yeah. similar enough that they can still shape it. I mean, that's yeah. comforting for them. And as a storyteller, it was important for me to, to has to be fun for the reader too. Right. For that's you right. and you that's and me. Right. And uh, so for instance, in the Chickadee Spirit book, they're playing hide and seek. And one of the lines, the chickadee is hiding while others are, and he's saying one, two, six, Three, <laughs> math is hard for a chickadee, and <laughs> and you know it's meant to math is hard. Mm -hmm. the, the reader can really mm -hmm. yes. get and that involved is important. too. Yeah. It really is just important. like those great new animated movies. They mm -hmm. have all sorts of things for us old folks mm -hmm. as well as the kids. Yeah. But what I love about what you just did was you made the gesture that you've created in in the book of the wing over the eye. You know, mm -hmm. and that that's a little thing that. Kids also love to do is replicate gesture. Mm -hmm. So these are all the qualities that make this um, this series, the Chickadee series, so so charming and so attractive. Um, we, you told us about how it 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 um, rose that you were watching the chickadees, but you kept going. I mean, there are three chickadee books, and then there's this other one, which we'll talk about in a minute. Why chickadees? I mean, what what well, what attracts? I mean, I know the story about faith, but what about mm -hmm. why why not um, robins or? <laughs> well, it, for one thing, the word chickadee. It's it's you know there are certain words Is in the, the language ah, that yes, are just are. a chickadee, and uh, it, they're around all winter with us, and ah. so that makes them a very special. But you know, a junco is around all winter, but 
We're Junkos at night. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not the same. Yeah, right. So, the so name. the chickadees, um, and they're, they're just, they're in every state of the union. So that makes it, mm, they're, they're good like universal. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, and so they're just, uh, for all those reasons. It, yeah. And they're kind just, of charming. I mean, they, they just are, their size they're, and their sprightliness. I, don't I call think. them tough and tender little birds. You know, they tough hang in there, <laughs> but they're friendliest birds. A lot of people have stories. Hunters, others, bird feeders have stories about how the chickadees will land right mm -hmm. near they them or on close, them. Yeah. yeah. So. yeah. I, and I, I think I mentioned this earlier when I'm cross country skiing, almost inevitably, it will be the chickadees that will, will follow me on a trail mm -hmm. or they'll come in and you'll hear that little call. Mm -hmm. You know, it, they're so, you're right, they are so charming. Um, so you never considered another bird once that happened? Yeah, no, okay. I, I didn't. All right. <laughs> are there more chickadee books to come? Actually, I thought my third one, my trilogy, was the end, but then I got another idea. So. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was going to lead to my next question, because your first one, Chickadees at Night, is whimsical and fun, and it's just, it, it seems like, it, it feels to me like a first book. Mm -hmm. And then you come up with the Chickadee Spirit, and then the third one is Chickadee Land. Right. So um, talk about the progression here. Well, honestly, um, the spirit book, when I first did Chickadees at Night, one of the things they did at night was they had this big celebration in the woods when people were gone and they, you know, they mm -hmm. were celebrating. Uh, but then when I read and I read it to others and um, it was too long. It was oh. just too much, too mm -hmm. many words. <laughs> and, uh, and that is a big problem with many children's books. Mm -hmm. And so I took it out. But then when this first book was so popular, mm -hmm. I thought I'm gonna take just that one part and expand it and make it uh, a bigger, its own book, but it also thematically, this is about, like you said, individual chickadees and just what they do at night and the love they share. And this one is about a community. Like mm -hmm. you can see, mm -hmm. this is the chickadee choir here. There's a few <laughs> other, you know, look who's arrived at the holiday fire. It's the entire chickadee choir. Mm -hmm. and, <laughs> and, uh, and the whole book is that. about that and there's one little outlier chickadee who isn't a part of it, who is drawn into it. So that one, uh, so I then consciously made it something about community, mm -hmm. individual community. And then this one went out into chickadee land is about the whole country. And it's about our national parks, celebrates our national parks. So this was very consciously expanding even from uh, community to uh, mm -hmm. our country I and just, our national parks. I just uh, so love this literary progression that you're on, that you start out with this uniquely in independent mm -hmm. and individual impulse, which I think is where we all start with mm -hmm. our writing, and then to community, and then to a kind of, um, this isn't overly patriotic, but it is a sort of national consciousness, mm -hmm. you know. and. And then um, I just wanted to show this one. You uh, mentioned our own beautiful. Sleeping bears further down. Further? Yeah. Yeah, just to show our. Maybe you should say going. something about the illustrator at this yeah. moment. Yeah. We will. So Let me see. Where special. were we? There she, there he oh, is. Oh, yes. So if we can just showcase this for a minute. Our beautiful sleeping bear images. Right here. It, it's, a, it's just such a heartfelt depiction, an original and mm -hmm. accurate of mm -hmm. the sleeping bear legend. The, the Empire Bluffs becomes mm -hmm. the mother and the Manitous become the babies with their underwater uh, going towards the mom. So uh, that one I actually did make up into... Uh, a you larger. Know, larger's because mm -hmm. it's so soulful it around is, yeah, our area. Yeah. Yes. So. 
That's a that's a beautiful one, but that recognizes our national lakeshore. And you mm -hmm. mentioned, I think there's glacier in here. There's or? there's in the pictures like this is Yellowstone, the geysers, and mm -hmm. there's actually um, maybe twenty actually pictured in here from Acadia to Yosemite, all over the place mm -hmm. glacier. And uh, but the back has a map too that shows all fifty national parks and lakeshores and whatever. That is remarkable. So yeah. what, what I see, I see two ways in which literary activism is working here, and that is, um, one is the, the consciousness of the content. This, this became progressively more about something that you mm -hmm. wanted us to pay attention to. Yeah. And with that, to go back to your question, the illustrator, Charlie Murphy, mm -hmm. um, can you talk a little bit about him and then I'll go back to... Sure. Um, what I say is, I could be Shakespeare, but mm -hmm. these are picture books. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, if you're thinking of writing a picture book, you better think twice before you get your sister-in-law's best friend's daughter <laughs> or whatever, uh, and make sure. And it was really, a ha I didn't know Charlie Murphy. I knew his work. Mm -hmm. I just set off the, the lyrics of Chickadees at Night, the first book, to him. and. It resonated with him, mm -hmm. and that became our partnership. So, um, and he happened to have just that wonderful uh, mixture of talent, first of all, but mm -hmm. uh, his palette was all about beauty and, and whimsy yeah. mm -hmm. and mystery, yeah. And uh, so, so it, it just worked. I, I should say, too, though, that with a picture book, it's really a tripod. And Charlie's not a graphic artist, and uh, so Jen Thomas is local. She's the graphic artist, and she's a very important part of you know even this cover, how it's the colors, the, the, the all that, you yeah. know all okay. of that, the yeah the, the design, the design, the fonts, the where it is on the page. If it's a picture book, it there's a big interaction there going on between author, illustrator, and the word text to where it goes mm -hmm, and everything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think um, graphic designers on texts of books of any sort are. Mm -hmm. they, you're right. They are the third um, spoke, and we don't think yeah. about it very much. Yeah. You know, but they're really yeah. important. You're right. What have you learned about what kids like since you've gotten into this adventure? Well, when I uh, <clears throat> first started. Uh, you know, it was, there was, if you do your little Googling, you'll see people saying things like, there's nothing more difficult than writing a good picture book for kids because it's the picture book element. You know, you're getting into it and everybody wants to write a picture book and can. they have their kids that they want to write for yeah. and their grandkids, but um, it's, particularly if you're adding the pictures, that's, you know, it's one thing mm -hmm. to write a kind of a legacy book that you just sure. eat within the family, but if you're trying to do one that you want to have a bigger audience, once you burn through family and friends, <laughs> uh, that's a tough sell. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, so you've got to have a wonderful illustrator or be one yourself mm -hmm. to begin with. Um, but they all also say that, uh, you know, you have, a, have to have a strong character and a strong plot. And mm -hmm. my book, Chickadees at Night, doesn't have a strong character <laughs> or a strong plot. But it's, in terms of a self-published book, it has been very successful. Mm -hmm. You know, most self-published are two, mm -hmm. three hundred copies. This one is many thousands. And uh, just Horizon alone has mm -hmm. sold uh, mm -hmm. over 3,000 copies of it. But- um, That's incredible. Yeah. That is really incredible. Yeah, so my thing is, some, it just something I has to capture the heart of a child, you know, mm -hmm. the heart and mind of a child with the, what's going on. And I think in ours, Charlie and mine, it's the pictures, it's the words. The rhyme. Yeah, the rhyme kind of, and, mm -hmm. and just and the whimsy and the child is involved sometimes. There's one line where um, 
chickadees are having their snacks at night of insects and grubs and it says, now everyone knows that chickadees chirp, but after those snacks, do chickadees, and it doesn't use the word, but of course every child is mm -hmm. going to add the rhyme there. And mm -hmm. so there's those just interactive moments. Yeah. And so I guess most of the time, 99% of the time, you should have a strong character, <laughs> a strong <laughs> plot. <laughs> well, I would argue, but, I would argue that the chickadee personality is the character that drives this. Well, that's and sure. and the, even though there's not maybe a plot arc, there is definitely a series of incidents that these yeah. chickadees encounter. It is clearer in um, in the chickadee spirit mm -hmm. in this one mm -hmm. that there is a there's a chickadee personality driving this community mm -hmm. action, mm -hmm. and I think. To me, that gives great hope for humanity if we can take a lesson, you know? Yeah. That's the other thing. You can't be too overtly message-bound. I right. mean, the messages need to be pretty subtle. And right. um, it's tempting always to be teaching. To it children. has yeah. to be there, but, but yeah. Yeah. show yeah. it, don't say it. Mostly kind of fun. And yeah. Then, yeah. So one of the other things, that, you know, we. So the message itself, which is subtle, but it's also very clearly there. You know, you mm -hmm. have this beautiful celebration of the natural world in the first one, and then you have in the second one this celebration of community action. And then in the third one, this appreciation for the natural world and, and our parks and right. uh, our, our nation. So um, each one of these, you've also given profits to a cause. Mm -hmm. And so can you talk a little bit about that? Because that's another aspect of the literary activism. Yeah. 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 Well, first and foremost, I uh, entered into this when I was retired. Uh -huh. And I, so I didn't need to make a living um, mm -hmm. uh, from it. Uh, so I've been very blessed in my life. I just had this urge to write these books. And, but I also wanted to make them uh, outreach to uh, causes that I thought were very valuable. Mm -hmm. So um, we d uh, donated profits from the first book, not all profits, but profit profits for, to Wings of Wonder, which is a wonderful uh, animal rehabilitation, bird raptor, raptor, raptor re rehabilitation. rehabilitation. Yeah. And, um, and Chickadee Spirit also has continued uh, that we gave to some community organizations, Chickadee Land, uh, to, to natural, uh, locally, to Sleeping Bear. Uh, National Lakeshore? Uh, to, the, to the actual uh, Heritage Society, oh, that those sure. guys that yes, are working yes, yes. there. <clears throat> and uh, also to Flow and to Groundworks, because Chickadee Land is very much an homage to uh, there's one little poem at the end that says, we share this land together, mm -hmm. you know, and mm. uh, from the grizzliest bear to the buzziest bee to you and me and chickadees, we share mm -hmm. this land together. And so it went to uh, a number of, totally, all of the profits at this point from all of my chickadee books go to these natural yeah. organizations. Yeah, that's yeah. A, I think a wonderful what way. What a great yeah. partnership because it enhances the message and the visibility for everybody. And then this this was the surprise. Mm -hmm. This is the off the one that's off series. Right. And yet it's actually I think one of my favorites. And this one is focused on a uh, it goes around the world to every continent and then it comes back to a town very much like Traverse City where a young soldier is trying to get home in time to celebrate Christmas with his family, thus 4 a.m. December 25th. So it captures that moment around the world and uh, then comes home and shows him trying to get home. How mm -hmm. did this come about for yeah. you? Um, this, was, this was the one that I would say was um, inspired by a person, uh, well, it was inspired by my dad, oh. and, and and the what he represented. World, so many World War II veterans who were quiet, 
you know. Mm -hmm. They came mm -hmm. home, and he didn't talk a lot about the war. To him, the the uh, you know the heroes are buried, mm -hmm. and uh, he made it, and he was moving on with his life. So I just wanted to write something to dedicate to him, and I wasn't quite sure what, um, but I had written a poem many years ago called 4 a.m. on Fridley Road, and it was mm. all about houses, farms, sigh in their sleep, <laughs> and uh, you know, the moon chases something up a road while some rooster gets wind of dawn, and it was, I thought, that's always been a very evocative time of the mm -hmm. day for me. But I wanted something too that a Christmas book is commercially popular and mm -hmm. and I just started that so somehow all that got wound up together and with my dad and it became this book um, and I donated some to four different veteran organizations but the lion's share to our local VFW. That's mm -hmm. such and, a, uh, I mean, think, my dad was in the war, too, and the whole too. idea of being home for Christmas, I mean, there's a song about it. Yeah, know? I'll be um, home for Christmas, being so, it's really in the powerful. middle of the war. Yeah. yeah. I think uh, the illustrations on this one are so moving, but the, there's, there are two, I should have marked them. This is a different illustrator, this is Glenn Wolfe. This another, is Glenn Wolf. How lucky we are to wonderful, have <laughs> regional. His, his, yeah, he, he is just, he has, I don't know how to describe the difference. He, he's more detail-oriented mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and so forth, but both wonderful, Equally wonderful. Equally imaginative. And yeah, illustrative. I was so impressed with, as I study this, this one of the entire, the house, mm -hmm. the main room of the house before the father comes home, mm -hmm. and how barren it is and cold-looking, and the colors are sort of muted dark. 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 and dark. And then he does exactly the same thing with all these subtle changes, mm -hmm. you know, of what it looks like after. <laughs> and it's so mm -hmm. bright and vivid. And if you study the detail, every mm -hmm. little, you know, point is shifted. And I just thought that was another remarkable thing that, mm -hmm. that, um, that it, uh, mm -hmm. you know, again, illustration working yeah. with text, working with message. And that, that's a through line, actually, of of the other books too because Chickadees at Night has a hide-and-seek page mm -hmm. and their uh, birds, chickadees are hidden in Chickadee Spirit, animals are hidden and in this one it's that you find all well, the these things spy. that weren't just, in the on in the, the one page that are, are now that there the including not only presents and life but um, his duffel bag mm -hmm. and his boots mm -hmm. that he wore coming mm -hmm. coming, coming mm -hmm. up the road. Yeah. So in that way, it's there's a graphic narrative element in it that's really critical. Mm -hmm. Kids yeah. love that. Yeah, they certainly do. Um, uh, I, so and this one goes to vets, right? And yes. it's you know, and you said it was a, in terms of your father, it was a, mm -hmm. a sort of homage to him. Right. How have communities responded? Do they have a favorite? Do you have a, um, are there standout moments where you felt like you were connected with communities? Um, I, I don't, the favorite book just from mm -hmm. how many are in circulation would be Chickadees at Night. I think uh, it's not tied in so much to a certain season. Mm -hmm. It's one that works as a shower, a baby book, mm -hmm. as well as mm -hmm. a seasonal book, and it's evergreen. I, I think the one that has connected me most to the community is the 4 a.m. December 25th, uh, because my circles as an educator were educators, and as a writer were the kind of writers around town mm -hmm. and all of this. And this really brought me directly uh, into contact with the VFW and veterans. And, mm. and there's, there's 30 different veterans groups operating for different gold star mothers and people for ho veterans for housing and all of these different no veterans groups around the county. And uh, it, it just made me so aware, and now, you know, I have friends that I can walk into the VFW hall and we just hug when we meet, and um, 
And that's been really good because I sometimes think in Traverse City there's these <laughs> two different sides mm -hmm. more than that, but but that there's a lot of groups that don't interact with each other. So it's been fun to be able to bridge mm -hmm. those. Groups. Yeah. And as a as a country, we've gone full circle on how we our attitudes toward vets. Oh my I gosh. think, you know, mm -hmm. um, from the post 60s era when when we were not supportive of our vets in in some ways we we just were ignorant mm -hmm. of what was happening and yeah. so and now there is i think a great deal more support and we're trying to figure out how to in in how to nurture yeah the well then, yeah with yeah. the 70th anniversaries i mean all the the, mm -hmm. the recognition mm -hmm. of <clears throat> world war ii and some of the main events of that um, exactly plus mm -hmm. the first world war yeah i mean i think it's come into consciousness in a different way yeah the uh as far as just special moments about the book itself and uh actually charlie murphy the illustrator had the the moment that i think is the most special he was hanging out at cherry capital airport waiting for a flight and um, he got to talking to this uh, family next to him. Um, I'm not sure if the kid was there. I wish Charlie were here now. But um, the parents, and, and what do you do? What do you do? I'm an illustrator. Oh, what books? And he, he said chickadees at night. <laughs> and the parents proceeded to recite the entire book oh. with him. Oh. At the hill, and that goes back to your original point. You know, a kid wants to read it so many, oh, times. many times. These parents, yeah. these parents knew that book, and so you know that's what the child, and um, oh, really you know, sweet. as a children's book author, the idea of thinking of thousands of kids who may act in a similar way mm -hmm. towards things mm -hmm. is that's what counts the most. Yeah. yeah. And you have gone out and not, I, I understand these books are selling well in, not just in the Michigan and Great Lakes area, but throughout the country. And you've had some experiences in other states. Is that correct? Uh, well, I, yes. Yeah, I have. And um, actually, when the first one came out, I took faith uh, on a road trip. <laughs> <laughs> Packed up. She was 87, 88 years old at the time in dementia, but she loved looking at colors. It was this time of the year, mm -hmm. and we just got in the boat, threw a suitcase, threw her the pins in there, <laughs> and yeah. everything else, and, and took off. And it was a wonderful, and some of those booksellers back east do still reorder the book. Mm -hmm. um, and they remember, uh, and she was also five foot nothing, and I'm six foot six or six, you know. Oh my gosh, and, um, the comic so, element mm -hmm. in the visual alone, yeah. yeah. I call it the greatest trip she'll never remember. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, of course. And it was remember. just a wonderful thing. So, but honestly, too, it is mm -hmm. the lion's share have been not only in Michigan, but in Northwest Michigan, you know, and, sure. and luckily a lot of people come here from other spots in the country, so uh, booksellers get orders from them, and I do on the website and all of that because we, people, we get visitors yeah, we up here, mm -hmm. so that's yeah, kind of yeah. nice yeah. too. Yes. Oh. But it's never, you know, I've never gone to the big bookstores because they want return policies, and I've never, um, even library, I've never really marketed it hugely nationally. Mm -hmm. so. Better to be writing them than art. <laughs> I think, you know, that's a hard decision, but yes, I think well, that's true. Well, and again, it, it certainly goes back to my being You're retired and not, not, mm -hmm. a, yeah, not having to earn a living. It's a very, very tough way if you're getting yes. your whole living I think from that's it, for true, sure. Though. I think yeah. that's true. Well, thank you. Thank you for talking to us about this and for making it such a charming, charming book and, and series for, for students and, and children. Mm -hmm. I just, um, I'm just grateful to you for your work. Well, I thank really, you. Yeah. I'm, I'm blessed to be able to do it and oh. hope, uh, hope we can 
have another one at yes, some point. Yes, I do too. I'm <laughs> excited that there's another one perking out there. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And we'll be right back. Welcome back to Ideas Live. I'm Anne Marie Oman. And Karen this Anderson. is Karen Anderson. And um, we are just finishing that incredibly delightful <laughs> interview with Bill O. Smith, who is the author of The Chickadee Books. And uh, we were talking about literary activism and how books, although we do it, of course, the first impulse is for our own pleasure <laughs> and our own artistry and maybe for a specific audience, but his books opened up and became, um, carried a, a positive yeah. message. And then he makes sure that there's, related to that message, he's supporting these other groups. Yeah, you can add advocacy to right. the literary component. It's right. kind of a neat partnership, I think. We don't always um, think about doing that. Or And I think it's important what he said is he's in a particular position where he's able to do that. He's mm -hmm. able to give the profits of the book to an organization that is doing good. And mm -hmm. so that's a way that he is helping. Mm -hmm. But it's also, I think, he, you know, he made me think about are there other ways, you know, that we mm -hmm. use our literary mm -hmm. activism, mm -hmm. you know, the message, of course, is part of it, but also mm -hmm. are there ways that we can do it without um, the financial? Without, yeah, I think there are. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you do this too. When I've been out doing readings from my book and I go to libraries, mm. I always spend the first several minutes or longer talking about how much I love libraries and how yes. valuable they are as a resource. And I, I carry that message everywhere I go. And mm -hmm. so I think there's different ways to advocate and support. And I think that, that all of that has to do with uh, the, the whole idea of making books mm -hmm. the primary thing. You know, mm -hmm. that we need to be readers. Yeah. We need to be, we need to be um, mm -hmm. advocating also for literacy in general. Mm -hmm. But I also think, like, I've been conscious of some of my younger um, authors who are not in the same position that Bill O. Smith was in, who are developing reading series mm -hmm. that are representing other uh, all kinds of people mm -hmm. representing, trying, really consciously trying to present diversity in mm -hmm. a reading series, or advocating uh, creating a reading with a fundraiser for a particular mm -hmm. organization, yeah. which I think Bill has also done. Mm -hmm. So there's all these ways, I think, in which we can think about literary activism in the larger picture. Yeah, and Flo has done quite a few events. Oh, Flo has been amazing. That have encouraged artists of all mm -hmm. varieties um, to be part of their organization, including the fundraising piece, so that um, the messages are interwoven. I really like that. I, I think that's a way that we don't always think about, that art is not just for art's sake, but it's also to amplify the good. Mm -hmm. And yes. that's what we try to do. Nice way to wrap up. Yes. Thanks. Glad you're with us. See you next month. Mm -hmm.